So gaming off a USB stick is certainly possible and it's a very appealing process because depending on the capacity of your USB stick, you can load as many games as you want and having to run them without reinstallation on different computers. Just grab your drive and go. And also make sure to check out our gaming on a USB stick video because that will give you sort of a good reference baseline as to what we'll be doing today. High capacity USB storage also have their place for creative individuals who want to use them to offload cache files and store different information without having to unload it onto the computer itself. But today, I'm excited to create the world's fastest gaming USB drive using an M.2 SSD and an appropriate enclosure. USB 3.1 Gen 2 enclosures in particular. So let's see if it's worth your time in picking up an M.2 SATA based SSD, combine them with an enclosure like this and see if you've got yourself the ultimate customizable capacity based on the M.2 drive that you pick up. USB stick for gaming and productivity right after this. Oh yeah, it's the new Darkbase Pro 900, the white edition from Be Quiet. All white exterior and interior with black accent look gorgeous with a tempered glass panel and uniform paint job on the other side too. Comes with a Qi charger up top, three excellent fans and a fully modular interior as your playground. Get yourself the limited white edition Darkbase Pro 900, only 2000 made, links below. All right, so our hardware for this project include a 275 gigabyte M.2 SATA based SSD that I picked up for under $100. Now the SATA portion here is important because NVMe M.2 drives will not work with these enclosures because the power limitations of the Gen 2 interface. It simply is not powerful enough for NVMe storage. The drive is 80 millimeters in length, the longest out of the M.2 selection, and therefore current enclosures must be large enough to house these drives and are significantly larger than the regular USB be sticks, but I'm sure that we'll see smaller enclosures to accommodate for smaller M.2 drives. Now the cool thing obviously is that whole DIY aspect of creating your own USB stick, so capacity will be based on your budget, and these M.2 enclosures range from $15 to $50 depending on the interface. So I picked up a few to compare, two of which are USB 3.1 Gen 2 and the other is Gen 1. And I've compiled a list of all the M.2 SSD enclosures in the description below so you can check them out. Now the most convenient out of the three is the silver Stone MS-09 that aside from having the Gen 2 interface and the beautiful aluminum enclosure, the USB slider mechanism is absolutely brilliant. It is very satisfying. It also does not require a cap like on the standard USB stick, nor does it require a cable like the other two enclosures have, which are based on a Type-C port, which is convenient and have a Type-A end of cable. Now a quick note about the Silverstone enclosure that it is thicker than most uh, USB sticks, so it will uh, block adjacent USB ports on your notebook. Now the two things they all have in common is a screwdriver is included and they all support the largest 2280 format, but size difference varies between all three, plus they don't all support the shorter M.2 drives. Now installation is very simple on either enclosure, just plug in the M.2 SSD and you have yourself your own DIY USB stick ready for games. Just make sure to format it to the NTFS file system and of course plug it into the appropriate USB 3.1 Gen 2 USB port on your motherboard. All right, so the first thing was to compare the speed differences between all three enclosures, including the HyperX Savage drive and the M.2 SSD plugged directly into my motherboard. So looking at Crystal Disk Benchmark, obviously the Gen 2 enclosures are faster, especially in the 4K sequential, which are important for smaller files, and we're about 10% slower versus when the SSD is plugged directly into my motherboard. Board. Next, I copied my small 72 gigabyte video project folder that maintained good speeds until about 20 gigabytes after which the buffer gets full on the SSD. So here we have the SSD being the bottleneck with some interesting variation between enclosures and the HyperX Savage USB stick has completed the task much faster despite not having those super fast burst speeds in the beginning. Instead, we see a consistent transfer rate whereas the M.2 SSD really slows down after those 20 gigabytes. Doing the same procedure back Backwards, we still have some variation that is not consistent. I don't know why, but it's clear that the read performance is superior from the M.2 slot on the motherboard. And now let's shift our focus to gaming. So I transferred two folders with many tiny files, 55 gigabytes worth, to show the benefits of higher 4K write performance on the SSD versus the HyperX USB stick that really slows down when those tiny CSGO files are being moved. 
Next is game discovery from Steam. So it basically looks for those files and installs the game on your drive with similar results across the board. Even the native M.2 slot is not much faster versus the rest. And loading into the Dishonored 2 game save, it gives us an identical result of 19 seconds across all drives. And so from my time gaming off the M.2 USB stick, regardless of the enclosure, I did not notice any unusual behavior. So games were loading just fine. There was no stuttering. Uh, loading between map sections was just completely normal and I did not encounter any anomalies that I did with the HyperX Savage Drive in CSGO where the game would just simply freeze up randomly throughout multiplayer or single player in offline mode. And I'm thinking I might just buy a one terabyte M.2 SSD, plug it into one of these enclosures and have my entire gaming library on it so I'm a little bit more flexible on how and how many PCs I can just plug this into and have all my Steam and Origin and Battle.net games on it. Now it is weird that we're experiencing these inconsistencies in performance. Sometimes I get even better write and re-performance off a USB 3 port versus my 3.1 Gen 2 port on my Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard. So when I tested this on my Intel-based uh, X99 designer from Gigabyte, I got much higher read and write performance through this little enclosure versus when I tested the SSD uh, natively on the M.2 slot on my AMD motherboard. And when it comes to file transfers on my Intel machine, the read performance was a little bit quicker, but the write performance was like we saved a minute and a half in that whole transfer time. But my M.2 SSD is still the bottleneck here, uh, capping out at 150 megabytes per second for the transfers on both machines. And so these results are quite strange because for example, the HyperX Savage USB stick is slow in setting benchmarks, but it outperforms the M.2 SSD in let's say transferring files and stuff. And uh, even though I've updated all my motherboard settings and the BIOS settings and the USB drivers on my Ryzen system, it still is not as fast as what I'm getting on my Intel machine. So perhaps more testing will come as we figure out what's happening with this Ryzen machine. But regardless, you do gain the convenience of having your entire game library literally in your pocket and having that flexibility of moving it around between PCs if that's something you're into. And lastly, from a value perspective, this whole DIY approach is roughly the same price as if you were to buy something like the uh, My Passport SSD from Western Digital, uh, which looks better and is also faster for the 512 gigabyte uh, variant. The only benefit here is that you have more capacity options for M.2 drives and you actually physically have the drive. So if you want to populate it into your motherboard later on, you can do that. All right, so building your own USB 3.1 Gen 2 USB stick is super accessible now. Plenty of affordable M.2 SSDs on market with uh, plenty of enclosure options available as well. So you basically decide how big of a USB stick you're willing to carry. The new Corsair Void Pro gaming headset is comfortable, stylish in different colors, delivers fantastic wireless performance even for competitive gaming with an all new microphone for clear communications. Check out the Void Pro wireless or wired in the description below. And so this is awesome for gaming, productivity, media. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in this concept of creating your own USB stick for whatever purposes that might suit your best. I'm Dimitri with Howard Conducts. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.